Well, hello everyone. Just getting a couple last minute things put together here. Just have to make sure that I can um, see the video actually on my laptop. And here we are, okay. Oh, I can see I'm pixelated already. Hi, Joan. Hi, Karen. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Mary. I hope we get better reception. Right now, it looks kind of stinky. Hi, Lessa. Okay. Well, I guess we get what we get as far as the the look of the broadcast. Let's hope it straightens out. Okay, um, so today I'm going to show you how I make some sugar skulls. Hi Carla. I'm going to turn the camera down here and hopefully I'm in the frame. I, am, I guess I am. These are the enameled ones that I did. If we have time, I'll work on the um, riveted one too, but um, we'll see how it goes. I try not to um, have the demos go more than an hour and a half, so we'll see. We'll see where we get. Hey, Deb. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing here is I've got some um, shapes that I made with um, Potter pancake dies. These are the, this is the larger skull and the smaller one. So those would be right here. And if you're not familiar with pancakes, pancake dies, this is, this is what they are and you need a hydraulic press to use them. I can see we're still pretty pixelated. So anyway, you need one of these um, or or these to uh, to make the shapes for any of those shapes that uh, that I use on my demos. Basically, are from Potter, um, Kevin Potter, Pet Potter USA, or Dar Shelton. I use both of them. I get my dies both places. Um, I believe I believe these are still available on the Potter website. So um, if you're interested in, in purchasing them, that's where you look for those. Okay, so I cut out a, uh, a bunch of those and then I enameled them. Now I'm going to do, um, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to show you how I enamel these pieces and um, I have a couple of different ways of doing it. So, hey Deb. I get easily distracted. Anyway, um, I'm going to do it a couple of different ways. I am not uh, giving a handout today on this and the reason I'm doing uh, not doing that is because uh, a couple of years ago, I made a um, tutorial that's available on Etsy if you wanted it. It's like $12 on Etsy, and it has a little bit more in-depth information um, making these things. Uh, there's a couple of different ways, so I'm just going to show you one way today, and um, and that's the reason for that. Okay, I, I don't feel it's fair for the to to the people that have already purchased the uh, tutorial. So, you know, to just give it away is kind of, I don't know, uh, it just doesn't seem right. So, okay, so where do I begin? I am going to uh, torch fire some discs. Uh, let me see here. Put these to the side. And... 
what I'm going to do is do a couple of black and white ones. And I'm doing the torch, um, the immersion method of torch firing for these. But I will show you some other things as well. Okay, this is what I'm most comfortable with. When you enamel, there's a couple different ways that you can do that with a tripod uh, and trivets. And I will be using those. But for my first base coat, I like to use the immersion method. I just, I think you can't beat it. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is move the camera over a little bit. And uh, this is not my normal setup, as most of you know. So I'm kind of just, um, you know, uh, trying to show you the easiest way without dragging all the big guns out. So, all right. So I'm going to move over just a bit. Move the camera. Hopefully I won't drop it as I usually do. And I will get started. Okay. I'm just trying to see that you can see. I've got my tripod ready for the next step, but I'm just working on top of a, a cookie sheet right now. And um, it's just, uh, just, it can keep everything contained and it's heat proof, so or I'm not going to scorch my table with it. So, and I'm going to use a can, canned butane like this. There's other things that you can use, but this is, this is the way I'm going with this. And for the immersion method, I'm using uh, a mandrel. I think it's a 330 seconds. Uh, I'm not good with my fractions. It's either a 1 16th or a 330 seconds. So I'm using this. Basically, it's just a mandrel that's large enough. I think it's a 1 16th because I think this is a 3 32nd hole in here. I am, well, first of all, I put holes in top and bottom in my discs, okay? And I want to make sure that my mandrel is not so thick that it fills the hole. I, I need to have movement with my piece. The enamel is going to close that hole up just a little bit, so I don't want to um, uh, contribute to that, I guess. I want to make sure that my piece can move freely on the mandrel. And there are skinnier mandrels too, but I feel for this project, uh, I like the a little bit fatter one. So. All right, so this you may consider dicey. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm quite comfortable with it, but um, this is how I do the immersion method for these skulls. All right, I'm going to make sure, first of all, that everything's safe around me. I just opened a new can of gas, so I hope. Oh, looks like a little bit of a flamethrower there. Hmm. Well, that's pretty weird. I was just using this torch head a little while ago, and it was... This is not what you want to happen when you shut off the gas. Okay. Yeah, there's a problem here, but I'm not sure what it is. We'll go with another can. All right, that's that's what I want to see. Now I'm going to put my copper piece on the uh, mandrel, and I'm going to heat it up. Actually, I want to keep this can stable, so just keep it on the table here. Get it red hot. Dip it into the enamel. Heat it up again till it glows. Dip it in again. Tap it off. So that's two coats. Dip it 
dip it again. Four, three coats right here. You want to make sure that it's melted in uh, very smoothly. You don't want to see any orange peel or rippling on it. And what I'm doing is I'm twisting or twirling, I should say, my mandrel a little bit and walking the copper piece down. And then I'm going to take my cheap Harbor Freight pliers and knock it down. And just let it come down like that. Let's see here. Okay, so this is the skull in black right now. So I'm going to let that cool. Okay. This, you know, it, it might be considered a little dicey for you, but um, I don't know. I've had good success with it, and, and I'm kind of going to stick with it. So you do what you want to do as far as getting your first base coat on your enamel. Um, you could do it with a tripod and do a, um, a counter enamel on it, but this is a whole lot quicker. All right, so let me do one in white now. Set this up. And make sure when you punch your holes, on your pieces that you don't get so close to the edge that uh, when you heat this up it actually could like burn right through or melt where this is because the copper would be so thin there so kind of keep it up just a little bit uh, away from that very edge all right so I have my piece on here I'm gonna turn the torch back on I'm heating from behind the piece, the back of the piece. This is 22 gauge copper, heats up pretty quick. It gets that red and you dunk it in the enamel right away. Tap off the excess, put it back in the flame. Red hot again. Back in the flame. I generally put three coats on here. Sometimes the white might need a little bit more. Uh, you'll just have to take a look at it. The back will get a little bit scorched, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to just kind of twirl my mandrel down slowly. What I'm doing is trying to get away from all that enamel that's stuck on the mandrel so that it will release easily. So I'm just getting it away from that blob, keeping it in the heat, and I'm just pointing it towards the hole, because I want to keep that hole loose. And then I'm going to get my pliers again, and just knock that down. And then I'm going to burn off those enamel uh, spots on the mandrel and quench it so that enamel just cracks right off. Generally when I torch, when I do the immersion, immersion method, 
I use my lamp working torch, which is stable. It's bolted down to the table, so it's not going to go anywhere. So you have to figure out a safe way. If you're going to do this method, you have to find a safe way for you um, that things aren't going to get knocked over. There are, you could, well, my husband built me this block, a wooden block that I can place the can inside. Of course, I don't have it on the table, but um, it's got a base on it so it doesn't teeter. So um, that's probably a good idea as a safety factor uh, to have that. All right. To have something like that. All right. So these are hot for a little bit. And then uh, let me check any um, comments and then we can move along. Okay. Let's see. All right. Yeah, Carla, um, to me, the immersion method is, is a great way for that first coat. Usually I see the whole thing through with that method, just working on a mandrel, but I've gotten comfortable with that. So um, that requires uh, a lot of practice and patience and safety uh, precautions. So you have to do that. Deb is complimenting me, it looks like here. I've gotten so professional with these lives. Oh, you sweetheart. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm a lot more comfortable with uh, doing these now than I was in the beginning, for sure. Um, it just, uh, it takes me a while to warm up, you know? So, um, yeah, I hope that you continue to enjoy them. All right, so I put, um, does anybody want to see me do that again? Because um, I would happily do that again if you need to, to see that. Otherwise, you know, you can always replay the video and maybe catch things that you might have missed. So um, we'll just move along. All right. Uh, hot pipes. Okay. So once those are cooled, you can let the fun begin. All right. The next thing that we're going to use um, along with the dry enamel powders is we're going to use some liquid enamels which come in powder form. Um, you can buy them already um, reconstituted, you know, with water added, but it, it's really a, a better buy if you buy them dry and you mix your own water uh, to the jars, otherwise you're paying for water that you don't really need to. All right. Um, that's a good way to show this without dropping them. Okay. The next thing. Now, I don't have my um, liquid enamel powders, uh, the bags or anything. I, I put them, I transfer them into jars, uh, and I generally mark the... Um, the product number on the side of the jar. With the liquid enamel, I, I didn't feel like I needed to do that, but um, I've got jars of dry and then of some that are wet. So I mark them accordingly. So what I'm going to do is, let me turn this down here so you can see better, hopefully. All right, so I've got I'm just going to work on some paper towels. I have the liquid white. And, you know, this one I have a lot in here. Uh, I don't know why I put so much in here, but um, I just mix the dry powder with enough distilled water to uh, get it to about the consistency of a thick cream. That actually might be too thick, but we'll see. Um, and the thing of it is, is it will dry, even though the jar is sealed over time, uh, this mass will dry into a solid, like cake. And all you have to do is just add a little bit of water, of distilled water, a little bit at a time, and it will come back 
uh, to this nice creamy consistency. Okay, so we do that. I've got one for white and one for black. It does separate, so you have to um, mix it frequently when you're using it. You can use a craft stick. I've got a palette knife here, but it, that really doesn't matter. The, uh, the black, I don't know, when it separates, the liquid looks kind of gray. It's kind of strange, but once you get it all mixed back together, it's nice, rich black color. This one is a little bit thinner than the white, and we'll see how that works. You have to make sure that you um, scrape the bottom and the sides because inevitably there will be lumps um, that are easily blended, but uh, it makes the consistency different. You know, you want to make sure you get all the, all the stuff mixed. So yeah, this one is a little bit thinner. We'll see how it works. Should be fine though. No, Patty, it, it's just it's just how that uh, that liquid enamel is is so finely ground, it's like a powder. So um, th that just is a natural occurrence. And Marianne, I get uh, most of my enamels, I get them three different places. It just depends on how much I need and what's available at the different vendors. But e Thompson Enamel Company is probably the first and foremost uh, company that I'll use. I also use um, Painting with Fire, which has an Etsy shop. And I also use um, Enamel Warehouse that has um, a whole bunch of uh, enamels and enamel products, enameling products. So those are three very good resources on where you find that stuff. Now, I'm just using the liquid enamel for this project just for um, the facial, the face, uh, facial stuff, you know, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And the other stuff, I'm going to be using some little floral wafers. So I guess I'll start with the black one here. And I'm just going to take my paintbrush. You don't want to wait too long when you after you've mixed this because it separates so quickly. Let me get my glasses here. My extra eyeballs. Okay, so I'm just going to... Now this is just the way I do it. Doesn't mean it's the way it has to be done. You can decorate your guys however you want. Kind of looks like an alien right now. And, you know, you don't even have to, well, yeah, you do, I guess. You don't have to necessarily do the eyes uh, the way that I'm decorating these guys. But um, because I'm going to be putting the little Millefiori wafers, the the uh, flower wafers on uh on here so for the eyes now for the nose I kind of just make a little heart shape and sometimes it comes out good and sometimes not so good but you can always wipe this off if you don't like how it turned out okay and for the mouth I'm just gonna do a straight line across and then when it dries I will <clears throat> separate it a little bit uh, to make it look like teeth all right so here's the white black on white and then white on black I'm just kind of, I filled up my paintbrush uh, enough, so I'm kind of just getting like a big drip. 
that's kind of what I want more than painting it on. I'm kind of just dabbing it on and letting it flow a little bit. You don't want it too terribly thick either. I mean, too, too thick of an application because then it takes too long to dry. Some come out better than others. It's the luck of the draw. And he's got more of a triangle nose. All right. So what I'll do with these guys is I'm going to move them to a hot plate, well, a cup warmer. I'm going to put them on a cup warmer with this little enamel spatula and let them dry, if you can see that. They don't have to have this, but um, it speeds the process up a little bit. Okay, so you can see that. Okay, that's what I wanted you to see. All right, now I've got two that are already dry. All right, and an important tool is a toothpick for this procedure. So the eyes I can leave just the way they are, and the nose. I could uh, scratch around here a little bit if I uh, didn't do, you know, if I have some overlap and I don't want that on there, I can kind of scratch that off and then just blow it off. Uh, but I'm just going to make his little teeth with the with the uh, uh, toothpick. And I'm just going to blow with my breath on there to get rid of that excess. You could probably use an awl if you didn't want to use a toothpick. But you have to be careful because you can... This in, this liquid enamel can just kind of chip and pop off uh, where, you know, you weren't wanting that to happen or expecting that to happen. So just take it slow and um, and that's all you have to do. All right, so he's got his little teeth right there. And same thing with this guy. You could do his mouth differently. You could do dots. Um, you could leave it whole, just like, you know, that whole line if you wanted to do that. It's just really entirely up to you. you, or you could be more creative and do something entirely different. Okay, so that's, that's that for his teeth, all right? I've seen sugar, sugar skulls done a lot of different ways. You don't even have to put teeth if you don't want to. I mean, it's just entirely your design choice. Uh, I just kind of like uh, how they look with the little little teeth. And sometimes, a lot of times, you don't have really control over how um, some of this stuff fires, how it melts as it fires. 
uh, and by that I mean, you know, I try to get them centered and have matching eyes, uh, you know, but sometimes they slide, these little uh, millefiori wafers will slide on, in the heat. So, um, you know, sometimes you get a different look than what you were planning on, but but they still work, you know, they're, they're still kind of fun. Um, all right, so, yeah, and this guy, you know, his nose kind of spread out a little bit, but they're still fun looking. I think they're still kind of fun the way they are. All right, so then the next step is to add our little flower crown on here, which is, again, just these little tiny wafers. I'll show you that. The wafers come like this when you buy them. Actually, I think this is two packages together that I poured together because you don't get this many in a package. And they're like, I don't know, 18 bucks or something. So uh, this are this is a pricey uh, little embellishment, but I think it makes the whole piece, in my opinion. So, um, and, and there's lots of pieces that are just little chips. They're not sliced properly. There's just little, um, I don't know, uh, you get what you get, you know, it, it's whatever they give you. And you can get them in a multi-mix like this. If you go to Thompson Enamels, uh, you can get them, uh, most places, well, I'm not sure if painting with fire still carries these or not, but I'm sure they could get them if you asked. Um, Enamel Warehouse carries these in the multicolor like this. But if you go through Thompson Enamel, you can get individual uh, packages of colors. You know, you need all blue, all pink, all purple, all yellow. You know, they all cost the same. Uh, but if you are looking for you know, a lot of a particular color, you might want to order, uh, you know, a separate color package too, because I've bought a lot of these packets, these multi-mixes over the years, and some uh, have a lot of one color and very little of another color. There's generally a pretty good mix, but not always. So uh, that's just something to, uh, to keep in mind. These melt very quickly. This is the attraction with these guys. It's a lot different than using uh, regular Murini when you're doing lamp working. Those are a lot bigger pieces. And for torch firing, uh, they take a lot, a lot of heat, uh, a long time to, to melt in. And a lot of times you can actually burn your enamel piece by the time you've got them all melted in. You can put them in a kiln and get a better result as far as they're melting with the larger uh, the larger pieces like that. Yeah, Patty's saying it's pricey because cutting that thin, there's probably a lot of waste. That's probably absolutely true. Um, uh, you know, th those those would be really tedious to be cutting these things up. But, but they're a fun, fun addition. You can put them in a lot of different pieces, uh, enameling pieces, and they look really cute. Okay. Dawn, you're saying... Okay, you're answering Patty's question about the, the liquid enamel. Good, thanks for that. Yeah, distilled water is always good to use with this stuff. Um, I just keep my distilled in a small water bottle like this and mark it. So that way, uh, I always have a little bit of that on hand. Okay. So, uh, these are called Vitrico. I know it's backwards, but it's V-I-T-R-E-C-O, Vitrico, floral enamel wafers. That's what those are called. All right. So that's that. And generally, when I get a package of those, I separate uh, some of them out for 
uh, for the eyes because I, I try to get as close to matching as I can. It, it's That's just how I like to do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but that's what I'll do is I'll just spread them out and I'll save like a little container, an individual container of uh, closely sized uh, shapes, you know, and, and colors. So they, I have eyes handy right there. Okay. Okay. All right. So the next thing is putting on the little wafers and that I'll move these guys over here because these are the ones that were dried. So you could uh, get some tweezers, some little tweezers to pick up your pieces. And I am going to use some clear fire as my glue to kind of uh, wet them down to make them stay. Um, I've done it a couple of different ways where I didn't put any on. Um, and sometimes when you apply the flame, then they just start to, to scoot all over. So this just kind of keeps them stable. Uh, clear fire is good. You can also use hairspray. Um, I, I don't use that, but um, I know people who do. So, you know, that works as well. So the clear fire, you can get where you get all your enamel supplies. Okay. All right. So I've got my little tweezers. I've got my clear fire in this little container. I've got, and see, I don't know if you can tell so well from, from the camera, from your, from the angle, but some pieces are long, some pieces are just the slightest little chips. You know, there's, there's such a variety in here. Uh, I wish they weren't so tall. Some of them are kind of long, but like, um, like Patty mentioned, you know, they're probably really uh, a pain in the butt to to uh, cut up. They're probably flying all over the place. All right, so I hope you guys can see this, okay? And what I'll do is I've got my little eyeball ones, my pears right here. <clears throat> so I'll just pick one up and dip it lightly because I don't want a ton. I don't want a ton of, of the uh, of the clear fire on here because then it'll take longer for them to dry. So I'll place that in the center. I don't, especially putting that over the liquid enamel, I don't want to have too much on there. Okay, so once the eyes are on, then I can start uh, decorating the crown. I call it a crown. Maybe it's their hair. I don't. I don't know what to refer to it as, but I kind of think of it as a floral crown. And you oh, see that one? I didn't wipe off. That's a lot of clear fire on there. I'll just soak up a little bit of that. Um, you don't want to get them directly uh, into the hole. You want to. To be clear of that a little bit because they're going to spread out as they fire in. And of course, the, the larger ones are going to spread out more than the little teeny ones. But I try to put a little bit of different colors around. And not necessarily the real long pieces that are in there because they're going to take longer to to uh, melt in. But even these little itty bitty pieces uh, work fine in this crown area. Oh, 
What I normally do is after I get them all uh, put on here, then I'll let them dry for a while. Or if you have a dehydrator, you can put that in there. You can put them in there and um, they'll dry a little bit quicker than air drying. And then as soon as you know that they're dry, then you can go ahead and fire them. Yeah, maybe that's too big for there. As I'm getting closer to the face, to the eyes, I mean, I, I want to not get so, I don't want them to spread out too far because then they can spread into the eyes. Maybe that doesn't matter. I, you know, I don't know. It's just how I think about it. All right, so I'm going to consider that good. Ah! All right, I'm going to put that on the hot plate. Well, it's not a hot plate, on the cup warmer. And then I'll do one other one. Okay. Yep. Thompson, believe it or not, you know, their, their pricing isn't, isn't bad. Um, and they have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of lot of materials. Oh, I want to do his eyes first. And like I was saying earlier, you know, you wouldn't have to put um, the liquid enamel around the eyes. You could just put a flower, you know, a little millefiori on there. But I like more the definition. Uh, of the eyes. So that's why I do that. That was a little bit too wet. All right. Just enough moisture to, to uh, make it stick is all you want on there. So it seems like, you know, dabbing it on the paper towel is counterproductive, but it really, it really isn't. It's, it's pretty necessary because more is on the bottom of that than you realize when you dip it in there. Can you still with me? All right. Forgot to dab that one. Okay, that'll just keep them from popping off um, when I go to fire them. So that's on the cup warmer as well. Now those need to dry for a few minutes. I did not uh, think about getting a set of those to that stage at this point. So uh, let's see here. I guess while I let those dry, Maybe we should talk about the uh, riveted, uh, the riveted skull, which is this right here. 
and I used the large the large skull for this guy and I had some um, Euro tool excuse me hole punch pliers in different shapes and this one is a square this one is a square shape which I punched I don't know if you can tell on this or not but I punched with the square shape to try to make it look more like teeth than the round but um, you know you, you don't have to have those but since I had them I kind of like that idea to make them look more like teeth on there so I did that um, I used a piece of patterned copper that um, that I had already rolled in the rolling mill and I just used a floral pattern but you know you don't have to have that on there or not you know whatever you don't have to have a pattern if you don't want to but I kind of thought it looked uh, a lot nicer with with a pattern on there so um, I also used some little doodads Uh, I really like these little uh, floral discs that I I don't know where I got them um, but I'm thinking art beads or beadaholic or someplace like that um, that I got them these are these are made by vintage they're just like a little pinwheel I think that's what they're called but you could use any, like a daisy spacer if you wanted. You could use those too, um, you know, just basically to uh, to use those. I did not I think about this. I should have had one already prepared in liver of sulfur, but um, I, I didn't think about it. I spaced it out. So uh, for these, let's see. For these, I used two of those little guys, um, and I learned a tip long time ago from uh, Beeducation. When you use a hole punch plier, um, which I didn't, I was impatient yesterday, and I, I actually forgot about this, I guess. Um, but when you're using the hole punch plier, you should use a little piece of this plastic it's like a needlepoint plastic, something like that, uh, that you can get at craft stores. I just got one grid, a, a sheet. I don't know, maybe it was six inches by six, something like that. And you put your, um, you put that, oh, this isn't even screwed. This is loose. A lot of times when you're punching the metal, if you punch too hard, you'll get like a little line from the metal that's around the nub there. So um, if you put this inside, if you wedge that inside, that eliminates getting that mark around from the tool. Okay, so that's kind of a neat thing. You There's two different, I guess there's different sizes of this mesh this plastic mesh that was an oval one this is the square one the plier I'm talking about and that keeps your metal from getting marred so that's kind of a cool cool thing to know you do get a little bit of roughness on the back though that you'll have to sand sand down yeah uh, Monica it's a great tip uh, and thanks to Beeducation, because I didn't come up with that on my own, but they um, they posted that a long time ago, and uh, it, it's just, it's a handy, handy thing to keep that. It's just so easy to mark up your metal with with the, uh, the excess. Well, it's not excess, but the way that this is made, it's easy to do. So, yeah, and, and you kind of destroy these fairly quickly but uh, you know this is like super cheap you know like 29 cents or something well I don't think anything's 29 cents anymore but but it's cheap if you get my meaning and you can cut them up 
and have them for many uses. So that's how I did that. Um, and then I used my Impress Arts paint pen uh, marker to get the, the verdigris patina on these little pieces. So that's kind of a neat thing um, to use if you like to put a little color in your piece. Don, you said you have a, a you've seen a piece of credit card. Okay, well I guess that would work as well. You know this this is I I have never thought about that, but I guess I should try that just to uh, to see how that works too. But yeah, you don't want to get your your metal all marked up. So basically, this is how I built this guy. So let's see here. Yeah, I should have patinaed him first because then if I'm adding these guys on, well, you know what? If you hang on a second, um, oh, I know what I can do. I can just use, I think I can just do this with a marker. I haven't done this in a long time. Let's see. Let's see how this works. I forgot about this. You know, I try to have all this stuff ready ahead of time, and uh, for the most part, I do, but there's always something I forget, it seems like. It's just the nature of the beast, I guess. So we'll just do this with a Sharpie marker. Just to get some color in the recesses of the design. All right. Oh, I better close up my liquid enamels here. I've got them open. Close those jars. Okay, so we did that. I think I have a pro polish pad around here somewhere. Maybe not. Well, Two for O. O for two? I think it's O for two. Sorry. I'm just throwing everything around here. Oh well, I guess I'll just use this guy and see if that'll work. It works. See, when you're forced to think of something else, something good could come out of that. That actually looks pretty nice. Okay, yeah, that actually looks good. I may even like that better. That's a big difference. So, looks good. All right. So, let's see here. So, I think what I'll do next, I hope you don't mind me jumping around uh, with the two projects, but I hadn't thought about um, getting a pair of those uh, prepared ahead of time. Now I'm just using this verdigris marker on the uh, little pinwheel discs here. I think that's what they're called. Put a little marker on there. I love this green color. I haven't found much use for the other ones other than the black. Uh, I, I don't especially care for the other colors that these come in. Uh, being that I work on copper mostly, I don't think the other ones show up that well. All right, so then in my little bag of tricks here, I will find a fine 
flower or something. Oh, I already have one. I already have one with patina on it. Maybe I'll put a different flower on. No, I'll go with the same thing. Whoop. There's a camera there. All right. And for this guy, I am using uh, my Crafted Findings riveting stuff and little rivets. Um, I'm not sure if I used this on any uh, of the demos before or not, but uh, this is by Crafted Findings. I broke the other side of this, uh, which was the hole punch. So I just use another um, 1 16th hole punch uh, to fit my rivets. And I've got, um, let's see here, I've got several different sizes here that I will work with. So I'm going to just draw where I want to put uh, the holes for his eyes. This is uh, kind of, with this pattern like this, it's kind of hard to um, see where I'm at. But I'm going to go here and here for his eyes. And then here for the hanging hole. And then here for a little dangle. And then the nose is going to be harder to see. For the nose, I didn't get anything for the nose. For the nose, let's see here. Can you guys see okay? Oh, I see we're pixelated again. Damn. Ugh. Nobody else is here and on the computers or anything, so... I don't know why that happens. It's a never-ending thing, I guess. Try to find a little something for his nose. I don't know if I like that or not. Here's a smaller one. I think I like better. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. The smaller one. Alright. If I don't drop it. Alright. So. I will put my holes in here. This is the one sixteenth end. You know me, Miss Eyeball. Got my two eye holes. Now my nose hole. The blow hole. This one is farther away. So I will use. Hopefully, this isn't a mistake. I'll use this punch plier on here. 
Okay. Now, I'll put his mouth in after I get his eyeballs in here. All right, so I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a one eighth inch um, rivet. And you know what? Now, now that I'm thinking about it, these the holes in these are just a tad small. So you will need to you'll need to um, stretch that hole out a little bit or make you know make it bigger. Uh, I just used an awl to to do that so that it goes through. So the rivet goes through the uh, the little eyelet or the um, Uh, pinwheel. Just a tad more. Okay. All oh, these tiny, tedious little things. Okay. So I'm going to put this in there and I'm going to use my rivet tool. Uh, Beadsmith makes these two to knock off. It's about half the price. Works just as well. But I gotta say I like the uh, crafted findings particularly because they have lots of other attachments that you can use that I find um, very beneficial. That makes a nice little rivet on the back. Of course, I didn't do a very good job on this one, but it should be smooth on the reverse side. I think I'm going off balance a little bit. Off center, I mean. Okay. And his eye is on there. All right, so now I've got to do this with the second one. Just enlarge this a bit. Get another rivet. Um, the Crafted Finding uh, Place also has um, lots of different size rivets and in different colors, different metals. Um, so that's kind of a plus also. You want to choose the rivet that is the best size, best length for uh, whatever metal you're putting through it, you know, whatever layers, if you're adding uh, a lot of layers, you need longer rivets. So, so that's on there. Now let's find a rivet for his nose. This is an awfully, awfully small flower bead cap. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I don't know if the hole is big enough or not. It's so small, it's tedious. It just doesn't look like it's the right size. The rivet head is, is, is just about as big as his nose. I mean, as the flower. Maybe I'll just put a rivet for his nose. Nah. Hmm. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Back in the box here. Let's 
see if there's something else a little more suitable. What about a daisy spacer? I could do that. But I have a feeling that's not going to be the right size for the rivet. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one like I used on the original. But I had to make the hole bigger, I, I believe, which is another hole challenge. That's pretty darn small. Okay, but I did it. What do you know? All right, so. I'll put that rivet through that tiny little flower. Through here. Oh, you know what? That was where do I put? Oh, here it is. <laughs> God. Sometimes I think I'm losing my mind. I used the oval hole punch, and I shouldn't have. I should have used this. I thought I was going to be shy, uh, not reach the not reach the center where his nose should be but it made it all right so let's see here we'll get this guy in place there we go got his schnoz on there and the wrong side This um, this tool makes short work of a lot of riveting, but the tool itself is close to a hundred bucks. the The original Crafted Findings one, and like I said, the the knockoff one is more around fifty ish, and it works fine as far as a rivet tool, so to say. Uh, but it's kind of nice to be able to by the um, add-on pieces too. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make my hanging hole at the top and I'm gonna use the larger size, the 332nd size of the um, two hole punch because I'm gonna put an eyelet in the top. To finish it off a little nicer and then I can just put a regular 1 16th hole down here for a hanger okay all right so oh, that was kind of off center but I also need well, I'm going to put my eyelet in here. I have a 332nd eyelet that I'm going to put in my hanging hole. These little containers are wonderful for your eyelets, um, but you need to mark them all as to what they are because um, they're all in little fractions and it can get easy to um, mix them up and also, when you want to reorder, you know the proper length. Now, I need, I need my eyelet tool. The, oh, hang on. Oh. Okay. I have a few. All right. 
If you should order from Crafted Findings, make sure you order the long reach tool because they have, uh, this is the, the original one, this is the regular one, and then they came out with the longer reach, which, you know, is cut in more so you can get more metal in there. You can get into the center of a piece better. So keep that in mind. Get the long reach tool if you buy from them. All right. And see, then there's an eyelet gizmo that uh, is available, too, that you can put your eyelet in the, um, the piece. And then you have your eyelet tool. That will close that right down. And adds a nice finish uh, on that. Now I want to put an, a rivet here for his little, or her little, flower, but I wanted to make sure that I cleared my rivet before I put that on there. That one I will mark because that I can't screw that up. All right, and I'm going to use another one eighth rivet, one eighth inch rivet for this. Actually, that's too long. I think I'll go with a three thirty seconds on this one because the longer the back part of that rivet is um, it's not going to lay down properly uh, sometimes they fold over a little bit uh, when they're too long you just want to have enough metal on the back side for that tool to catch it you see like that I don't know if you can see I hope so um, And then this little rivet tool has a little nub on the part that I'm twirling here that goes inside because these are hollow rivets and it goes inside the rivet and then it like compresses down. All right. So now he just needs a mouth. And I'm going to use my square thingy for that. And Carla, you said that you could just leave it on here. Leave this piece of metal on here. I mean, this, this piece of... Uh, I wonder if I cut a little square of that off. Uh, Mary, it, that's not a dumb question. Um, I do label my tools so that I know um, what what I have in him in here, um, especially with this riveting tool. Uh, it's too easy to get confused um, with the different sizes. Well, that's not working out to me. Let's see here. Let's see what well, that is. Well, I must be dumber than a box of rocks because that ain't working for me. There must be more to it than that.
this one isn't a long reach uh, hole punch. They make it in the standard uh, round hole, but not in the um, other shapes. In the oval, there's an oval and then the square. Um, there might be a diamond, I'm not sure. I'm not doing too well on here. I'm gonna just take my chances. I made his mouth a little crooked, but it's still on there. Okay, so then all I have to do is And Deb Henry, you're going to laugh probably, but I make, when I don't know what, what else to do uh, in my spare time sometimes, I'll make little looped uh, pins with check beads. And that way I have them ready for whenever I want them. So I'm going to put these on there. I do these at craft shows too when I'm sitting there uh, with nothing to do. I just make a bunch of these little things up and uh, then they're good to go whenever I need them. There's head pins. We're almost ready to do that other thing, the uh, enamels, the other thing. Tools. All right, so I'm going to take... Yeah, I knew you'd get a kick out of that, Deb. So I'm going to put three of them on here. And one through the bottom. And then attach that to that. And then open this. I, I've mentioned before that I buy copper chain, like oval, large oval links, and I use them as uh, like the hanging jump ring on things. So there you go. You have this guy is all done. And it didn't take very long at all to do this. So that... Um, I, I do like using that Sharpie marker uh, for the patina versus liver of sulfur. It's a whole lot bolder that you can see the image on there. So that's kind of fun. Um, these little beads, you could use any beads, but th these that I use are six millimeter, six O, I'm sorry, they're six O seed beads. And they are the check, uh, some of them are check three cut beads, I think they're, they're called, <coughs> but they're six millimeter. So uh, they're very, very um, versatile. And yeah, I use this little set of three dangles on a lot of my bracelets. Um, I, I, I just really like the way they look, they, the way they accent a piece. Now there are little sharp, pieces on the back from that um, square hole punch, but I can sand those off later on. Okay, so we're ready now to fire those enamel skulls. Where's my lid? Here's my lid. Otherwise, they'll probably all go flying. All right, so we need to move the camera over again pieces. If they're not dry by now, uh, I they're dry. Don't worry. All right, so now I'm going to use the trivet. Um, I'll use the trivet for one, and I'll do the other one with the mandrel. All right, so let me get this stuff out of the way. I will 
use the trivet. Yowza is that hot. That piece of metal that I laid my pieces on is hotsy totsy. Those are ones that I showed you before that I need to decorate yet. Oh, I knocked his eyeball off. Shit. Oh, excuse me. You didn't hear that here. Sorry. Ugh. Well, we're going to do the best we can here. We will do it. All right. So I have... three-point trivet right here that fits really nicely on top of this nine inch tripod. Uh, tripods come in six inches or nine inches. If you don't have one and you're going to get one, get a nine inch because you'll have more access to get your flame underneath. Okay, just a little tip. These um, trivets, these three-point trivets, I got from Pearly Carpole on um, Etsy. She has a lot of uh, enameling products. She's from Israel, so it takes a little bit longer to get your stuff, but she's got a lot of really neat things available. They come in three point or four point on here, and I'll explain that in a minute. So now we just have to get this guy up here without knocking any more of him off. And I have to balance him in between the three points of this trivet and keep it steady. I'm going to need to stand up on this one. If you have gotten any schmutz on, on your piece, you know, like little flecks of of the different liquid enamel, you could take a dry paintbrush, a very fine dry paint paintbrush, and kind of dab that off if you need to. Okay. Um, let me get this other guy off of the trivet. I mean, off of the uh, heat thing. All right. Oh, and I dropped. It. Man, am I a butterfingers? Honestly. Okay, well, you know what? Stuff happens. It happens, and you just have to deal with it the best you can. We'll put him back together. It's like Humpty Dumpty. And I'm going to fire them, even if they have a little moisture on them, and we'll see what happens. I know that that's not the ideal way to do things, but... Um, this is basically just to show you uh, the process. Actually, he needs another flower. Right there. He's a little bald going there. All right. Okay, so I have this guy up here. Can you see? Yeah, I think you can see. Okay. All right. So basically all I'm doing is I'm heating this up till all the stuff starts to melt down. And all I have my tweezers. I think I have everything in case there's another calamity torch. I'm coming from underneath. I hope you guys can see that the view is good enough. 
starting to get some heat on here. A few of them are starting to melt in. Naturally, the thinner they are, the thinner the uh, floral wafers are, the quicker they're going to uh, melt in. And you know, you could, if you wanted to, you could uh, leave them partially raised if you wanted to have a little bit of, of uh, texture look on there. His right eyeball doesn't seem to want to blend in too well, but it's getting there. Okay, so now remember everything is hot, really hot, so what I'm going to do here is just knock that off the trivet and let it cool off. Now this trivet's really hot. The thing with using a trivet is you have contact spots where your your enamel piece is going to lay. So then you're going to get little bits of enamel stuck to your trivet and you're also going to get a mark on your uh, piece of where the trivet, uh, where the enamel kind of melted uh, and kind of stuck to the trivet. So when this is cool I'll show you that a little bit better. But the color is coming out real nicely now that it's cooling off. All right, so now let's put this guy up here very carefully. Okay, and we'll get this guy. It's a good way to burn your bangs off if you get a little too close. So be careful. If you have long hair, tie it back and keep everything safe. Okay, the color will come out as it cools. Okay. To cool it off a little faster, you can put it on a piece of steel. It won't hurt anything. It just cools it off faster. All right. What kind of torch am I using? I am using, I have both. Let me get over here. Bring it back over here. see that we were temporarily interrupted. Honestly, Facebook, come on. Are we back yet? Hmm. 
I hope we're back. I think we're back. Okay. Sorry. I have no control over that. I don't know why that happens with Facebook, but it does. All right. Uh, back to Patricia. You were asking me what kind of torch I'm using, and this is a Sterno, Sterno brand torch. And I also have a Euro tool torch head. Uh, both of them are fine. I haven't really had any issue with either one of them. The, uh, the canister, the butane fuel. Are we back? <laughs> this is so frustrating. The butane you can get in camping supply area in uh, stores. I, I, I'm not sure about Walmart, but probably, uh, but it's generally in the camping section. I think they use these for camping stoves. I'm not really sure, but uh, you can also get them on Amazon too. So refills, the refill cans. Very nice. Um, the heads you can get on Amazon as well. Um, and they have a lot of butane in them. It takes a while to use one of these cans up, so um, they're, they're nice to have on hand. Okay, so now my pieces are cool, and I was talking about, oh, I was going to do one of them on a mandrel. Oh, well. Uh, basically, I'll, I'll just tell you about that then. Basically, it, it, it's a much dicier operation. But just say pretend that all the little pieces are still on here and not um, not fired. And basically, I will hold my mandrel like this to keep everything level. And then I have my flame come up from underneath and melt them all in. The thing I like about doing it this way, even though it is... A little more hazardous if you're not very careful if you don't have a steady hand I would say forget it you know don't don't even try it but if you're if your hand is pretty steady uh, you could try this it's a balancing act uh, but once this the enamel start to melt it will stick around your mandrel so it's not gonna fall off okay but the thing that I like about it is there's no contact point on here that you have to clean off later like you do when you're using uh, a trivet or a tripod, a trivet on a tripod. Okay. So that being said, these, I don't know if you can see, but there are little, there are little rough pieces of enamel that had stuck to the trivet and that you can't do anything about that I'm aware of I did try a spray um, can't think of the name of it right now I did try a spray that uh, glass fusers use on their molds that somebody I think Laura Bracken mentioned it that uh, you spray this white, it's a white spray, it's very expensive, uh, you, and you spray it on your trivets, and it's supposed to uh, give a non-stick finish, but I've had limited success with that. So you have to deal with these little sharp uh, pieces when you do it on a trivet. Um, so me being uh, me uh, <laughs> and not liking to not liking to uh, mess around a whole lot I will knock it off with one of these little um, wheels uh, one of these little pumice wheels it's like a little rubbery thing that's got some pumice in it and I will just uh, go lightly on here I will wear a face mask and a face shield because these little pieces will inevitably fly in your face so you can just clean them off or you can go to the sink and under water you can uh, use an alumdum, London, alumdun stone. Say that five times fast. I can't even say it one time fast or normal. 
So you can use that under there. It's like a it's like a stone that's um, made for you know getting these bits off the glass like that. But you use it under running water, so you can get that off of there. So, but you know they're they're kind of cute and they're fun. Can you polish after filing? Uh, you know, you're going to take some of the finish off of the glass, I think. You know, um, you have to give it a very light touch when you use that. Um, just don't get too aggressive or you're going to get down to the copper. So you don't want to do that. Um, but this is on the back anyway. It, it's not like you're doing it on the front and it's going to ruin anything. If it takes a little of the finish off of the back, that's not really a big, huge deal. So, but they're awful cute. I think they're cute anyway. Um, you've heard, Gina says, I've heard about, uh, heard a tip about rubbing chalk on the trivets to prevent trivet marks. You know what? I will try that, Gina, because, uh, I was cleaning out some of my grandson's stuff the other day in, in a closet and I found a box of white chalk. So um, I'm thinking that's a very good idea to try. And uh, I think, let's see. You know, Sonny, I don't know. You probably could use the scratch eraser on the from the jewel tool. Yeah, you probably can, but you, like I said, you have to be uh, having a light touch. I think. I think if you get too aggressive, you're going to go down to the to the copper, and you don't want to do that. So, um, but anyway, I mean, this is this is what we had today. Um, if there's any other questions, oh, um, you know, I didn't take it to finish it all the way, but let's see here. But I would do the same thing like I did on these guys. This is just my take on it, my style. Uh, but you can do whatever you want. You could you could not put a hole there and not have anything hanging if you didn't want to. Or you could hang something longer or different. Uh, that's entirely, it's t entirely up to you, you know, what you want to do. So, um, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, I'm not sure about next week yet. Um, I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I got some, let me see here. Hang on just one sec, please. I'm back. Um, I got some pancake dies from Kevin Potter um, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it it's a uh, these are supposed to be Christmas ornaments, okay? So uh, I got the the tree, this narrow tree, and this cactus, and a reindeer. So I ran it through the rolling mill yesterday with one of Gwen uh, Youngblood's uh, Christmas patterns for the rolling mill. At first I was thinking, oh, I'll, I was kind of playing around designing them, you know, like just with a marker and, and getting some designs on here. So I was thinking about that first initially, and then it's like, oh, I've got pattern from Gwen that I could try on here. So I rolled these through and I really like them. So I'm thinking maybe of doing a riveting thing on these, you know, do some kind of riveted design on these guys. Uh, and, uh, and they're meant for Christmas ornaments because they're kind of large for wearing, unless you're into that kind of thing. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that might be, that's a possibility for next week. Um, but if it's not this, it'll be something else, of course. And for the Kumihimo demo, 
Um, I still have one kit uh, that's uh, not been received yet, uh, but as soon as I get, as soon as that person gets that, then we can set a date uh, for that demo and do that. Um, it won't be long though. If it's, it's not, it's not going to be next week, but it'll probably be the weekend, af the week after for that. So you guys can get your stuff made before the holidays. Um, I do still have more kits available if anybody's interested. Um, but you will probably have to do your project after the demo is recorded um, because you probably won't get it in time. So, but it's still, it can be done because I'm going to take it from start to finish uh, on, on the demo. So you shouldn't have any problem doing it at a later date. Um, and what else? I think... I think that's what I wanted to say, but yeah, that's coming. So, oh, I'm going to have homework for you, uh, for you people that got, um, the kits. I'm going to have a, I'm going to do a little demo like this as a homework before we do the class, because you have to prepare your strings and your beads. And, um, I think that if I walk you through it, it would be easier than to just try to explain it. That way, all of us are on the same page at the same time. And it should be easier for you to complete your project that way. Okay. All right. So uh, that's it, guys. I will. Um, well, I won't post the handout because there is no handout that I can give. Like I was saying that uh, since I had made this enameling the, the uh, sugar skulls a tutorial, a, a purchase tutorial on Etsy, um, I didn't feel in, that I should offer it for free, uh, in fairness to the people who purchased them. So if you want to get a copy of it, you can go to my Etsy shop and get that. Otherwise, you can just work off of what I did today here on the demo. Um, so that's it. And um, I will see you guys on the group page and on Facebook. So take care. Thanks for watching. I always enjoy you guys being here with me.